All right, so law of signs. You guys did the law of signs in um, some of you algebra two, some of you definitely in geometry. So this is not the first time that you guys are seeing this. Okay, you use the law of signs when you have certain information and when you're looking for something. So we are going to use the law of signs. We're going to talk about what it is in a second. When we're solving oblique triangles. Some of you guys are like, what does that mean? An oblique triangle is just a triangle that doesn't have any right angles. Okay, there's no right angles. Because if you had this triangle, if I gave you this, and I gave you this side length, and I gave you this side length, and I said, could you figure this one out? Could you? Yes or no? Yeah, you would use the Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That only works, guys, if you have a right triangle. We are not dealing with right triangles. We're going to be dealing with something called oblique triangles. All right? You might be given two angles and a side. You might be given two sides and an angle. So the law of signs is just a proportion that allows you to find <clears throat> angle measures and lengths. Again, some of it, I took out a slide or two because they were just a little redundant. What you need to understand is you're going to be given information about triangles in different ways. You might be given one side and two angles, right? So then you can figure out the third angle. You might be given two sides and an, and an angle. You might be given two sides and an angle that's in the middle, just depending upon where the angle is. And you'll understand what all this means in a second. But what you need to really remember, are there how many degrees in every single triangle that we're going to deal with? 180, okay? Remember that. There's going to be a case where you can't use the law of sines. You're going to have to use the law of cosines. That's what we're going to talk about later in the week. <clears throat> but there's 180 degrees in every triangle. When you're using the law of sines, when you're using the law of sines, there are three possibilities, right? When the law of sines, I'm going to call it LOS, you could have no triangle, you could have one triangle, or you could have two triangles. Your calculator, when you enter in some work, <clears throat> you'll enter into your calculator and you will get an error message. It'll either say error, domain error, syntax error, something like that. If you get an error message in your calculator, it means that no triangle exists. It doesn't mean you did something wrong. It just means that a triangle doesn't exist. There is a possibility that there's only one triangle, and then there's a possibility that there's two. We're going to work on that possibility, the ambiguous case, tomorrow. So today we're going to deal with just there's none or there's one, okay? When you solve a triangle, when you, are, you solve a triangle, this is what you're going to be asked to do, you find all missing information. So if it says to solve the triangle, I'm not going to spell out, find this, find this, find that. You have to know, you have to find all the stuff that's missing. All right, very important. This is the law of signs. All it is is a proportion. You keep angles with side measures. Sine A over side A. Sine B over side B. Sine C over side C. You can also write it this way. If you want to put the side lengths on top and the angle measure on the bottom. Some people like it written that way. That's totally fine. Just as long as you keep sides with sides and angles with angles. It does not matter. All right, all you're going to do is we're going to set our proportions, we're going to cross multiply, we're going to solve in our calculator. <clears throat> what we need to understand about a triangle, okay, it doesn't really matter where you put your A, B, and C. What matters is where you put the angle measures in regards to their side lengths. Angles are written with capital letters. You guys see this? These are capital letters. Everybody see that? And then notice the side lengths are written lowercase. And what you will see, what you need to understand is that the side length and its corresponding angle are across from each other. So big A is across from little a. Big B is across from little b. And the C's are across from each other. So when they don't draw you a picture and they tell you that angle A is this and angle B is that, whatever, you know how to write that information down. In order to use the law of signs, you have to have an angle, an angle measure, and its corresponding side length, meaning 
the angle and the side across from each other. That's your proportion. You have to have the angle and the side that's across from it. And another thing I want you to remember from this for all week, right? The largest angle is across from the longest side, from the longest side. So that means the smallest angle is across from what? The smallest side, yep. <clears throat> when you use the law of cosines, you have to find the biggest angle first in order for it to mathematically work out. We'll talk about that. But a lot of you guys like to check stuff at the end so you can say like, oh, okay, this works because the biggest angle is across from the longest side, that sort of thing. All right, you guys got that? Okay, now we're just going to do a bunch of examples. I the word problem to the end. So you could be asked a couple different ways to answer questions. You could ask for just one like particular piece of information, or they could tell you just solve the whole triangle. In this case, for the first three, you're asked to find one piece of information. So like they're asking us right now, find the measure from A to C. So I want to know this piece right here. Okay, we can't use a Pythagorean theorem because we don't have three sides in a right triangle or anything like that. I have to have, in order to use the law of sines, you have to have an angle measure and its corresponding side length. Do I have an angle and the side across from it just by looking at this triangle? No. But can I figure out an angle measure? Yes. How? Can, how many degrees are in a whole triangle, guys? 180. 180. So add 118 and 22. And what do you get? 118 and 22, you get 140. Okay, well, there's 40 degrees left over, right? 180 minus 140 gives me 40. So that tells you that angle C is 40 degrees. Did that solve anything for us? No. But what it did was it gave us an angle measure and its corresponding side length. I can now use the law of sines to figure out what X is. I can say, okay, fine, I have the sine of 40 over 24, again, you could write 24 on top and four, sign 40 in the bottom, equals what? I'm trying to find x. What goes with x? What angle goes with x? Yep, sine 22, good, over x. Now, we are not putting anything in the calculator until the very last step. Because if you round too many times within a problem, you get further and further away from the actual answer. So all you're going to do now is cross multiply, guys. You have 24 times the sine of 22 equals x times the sine of 40. Now, the sine of 40 is a number. If you put that into your calculator, you get sine 40. You get 0.6427876. You don't want leave it as a sine of 40. Don't worry about doing anything in your calculator until the very end. How do I get x all by itself? By I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 40. You have to tell your calculator, guys, multiply the stuff in the top first, then divide. So if you need to <clears throat> do it in two steps, you want to hit 24 times the sine of 22, enter, then divide it by sine 40, you can. Or you want to put it all in at the same time and get, you, use parentheses, that's fine. But round your answer to one decimal place. So about how long is this side? About 14, it's 13.98. So you could say about 14.0 and then whatever unit they use for measurement. 14 meters. You do the exact same thing every time. You get the angle and its corresponding side. You set up the law of sines and you solve. All right now, again, number two, they're not asking you to solve the whole triangle. They're asking you for one piece of information. They want to know this piece right here. All right, now before you guys go, okay, let me find out how much angle A is and all that. In order to use the law of sines, what do you have to have? An angle measure and what? Not any side, the one that is across from it, right? It's corresponding. Do I already have that? Yeah. yeah, so I'm looking for this. I don't have to solve for anything inside the triangle. I can just set this up. I can say sine of 44 over 7 equals the sine of 53 over x. Every single time, guys, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cross multiply. So I have 7 times the sine of 53 equals x 
times the sine of 44. Now, if you're not getting the same answers as we are, the problem could be a couple things. You could be entering in cor incorrectly, or you could be in radians. If you don't know how to check, I'll look at your calculator. <clears throat> but if you <clears throat> do this in the calculator, 7 times the sine of 53, and then divide that by the sine of 44, what do you guys get? 8.04, so about 8 point, God bless you, 0, and then we'll put an M here. If you're not getting that, let me know. All right, let's look at the last one. Let's look at the last one. What are they asking you to find here? They're asking you to find BC, this piece right here. Now, somebody last period was like, oh, that looks like the hypotenuse. Guys, is this a right triangle? No. Doesn't have a box in the corner, but 93, that's a little bigger than 90. So let's look at, we'll see the information that we have. I'm looking for this piece here. Do I have an angle measure and its corresponding side length? No. Can I figure it out though? Yeah. Yes. I have two angles. I can say 58 plus 93. What's 58, 93? 151. Okay. And then what do I do? 180 minus 151. And you get? Okay. So this angle is 29 degrees. We didn't answer anything yet, but we did now say, oh, I have an angle measure and its corresponding side. So I can use the law of sides. So sine 29 over 16 equals the sine of what? Sine of 93 over x. And again, we're going to cross multiply. So 16 times the sine of 93 equals x times the sine of 29. Divide both sides by sine 29. It's really important to show me what you put in the calculator because if you put something in incorrectly, but you showed me that you knew what you were doing, I might be able to give you some partial credit. But if you just give me answers, that's not going to happen. I got 32.95, so about 33 feet, meters, whatever they're dealing with. Okay, good. Now, all three of these examples, did we find side lengths or did we find angle measures? We found side lengths, okay? <clears throat> There's going to be a time when you have to find angle measures as well. And we're going to do some examples like that. This is another instance or another way that you would be asked questions. You'll probably see these more so than you will these ones that just ask you for one piece. It's going to just say solve. You're going to solve the triangle. So the first thing I would tell you to do is draw a picture. And then the second thing I would say to do is identify what you have missing. Right? They gave me two variables. They gave me A and B. So I'm just going to call this A, B, C. It doesn't matter where I put my angles. What matters is that you put the angle across from its corresponding side. So uh, angle B is 73 degrees. Okay, great. So side A is 7. That's going to go across from the A. And side B is 5. That's going to go across from B. So now you guys have to determine what you have to find. What's missing from this triangle? Side C, so we have to find side C. What else do we have to find? Angle A and angle C. You guys agree with me on that? Okay, so that's what is your, your job. You're trying to find these things. That's what you guys are going to have to do on your quiz or a test. I'm not going to say, hey, find all this stuff. You guys figure it out. So in order to use the law of signs, you have to have a side length and its corresponding angle, do you? Yes. Okay, cool. So let's sine of 73 over, what was this, 5 equals. Now, some people are like, how do you know what to find? Well, you only have one little piece, one other piece of information. What do you have? What do we have? 7, right? Mm -hmm. What is 7? It's side A. Okay, so it's going to go on the bottom. Good. So if I have side A, then I'm looking for what? Sine of A. Okay, this is a little different from what we just did. All the other ones, the first three we found <clears throat> side lengths. Now we're going to find angle measures. So we cross multiply, just like we have been. So 7 times the sine of 73 equals 5 times the sine of A. Divide both sides by 5. So you get the sine of A equals, so calculators go 7 
sine 73 divided by 5. What do you guys get? 1.3388, right? 26. Okay, fine. Now, does that make sense that the angle, one angle in this triangle is 73 degrees and the other one is 1 1.3? No. Did you find the measure of angle A here? No, you found the sine of A. So we talked a little bit about this the other day, last week. Look on your calculators. There's a button that says sine. Above that button, do you see the little sine negative one? That's inverse, that's arc sine. In order to get A by itself, you have to take the sine negative one of both sides. So there's a couple ways you can do it in your calculator. If you're gonna do it in your calculator with your decimal equivalent, you have to give me at least five decimals. Or you can, when you get the sine of A is 1.33, you can hit second sine, and that little sine negative one comes up, and then hit second answer. If you don't see it, I'll show you where it is in your calculator. It says error. Well, what does that tell you then? There's no triangle, and that's okay. In web assign, it's going to tell you if no triangle exists, enter D N E. That means does not exist. So that's what you would put in web assign for all three. But for me, if you get error, that's okay. How do you do that? The second sign. Yeah. Okay, let's do the next one. Do you guys see a picture? Mm -hmm. So what should we do? Go ahead and draw one, all right? They gave me A and B, so I'm just going to say, okay, A, B, C. So label everything. B is 117 degrees. Side A is 16. Side B is 38. It matters, guys, where you put stuff. Angles and sides need to be crossing each other. So let's identify what are the pieces of information we're looking for. What's missing that we have to find? Side C, right? What else? Angle C and angle A. So our <clears throat> angles should have degree measures on them. If there's units, you should have the unit on your side lengths. Do you have a side length and its corresponding angle? Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's go ahead and set that up. I have sine 117 over 38 equals... What's the only other piece of information I have? 16. 16. So that's the side length. What angle is 16 across from? A. a. So it's the sine of A. Now, we're not actually finding A. We're just finding the sine of A. We're going to have to do something else in our calculator. But cross multiply. So you have 16 times the sine of 117 equals 38 times the sine of A. And then divide both sides by 38. <clears throat> So you get the sine of A equals, and you can leave it in your calculator. You don't have to write it out, but sine 117 divided by 38. Did you guys get 0 0.37516? Mm -hmm. Now, you don't have to write that step out, but is that the angle measure? No, that's the sine of the angle. So hit second sine, second answer, and round your answer to the nearest whole number. Nearest whole number. What would you guys get? 22, yeah? yeah? 22 what? What goes on our answer? 22 degrees. Okay, so there we go. Fill that in. So now you found out that that angle measure was 22 degrees. So I'm going to put it in my picture just so I can see. Can you guys figure out the measure of angle C? Yeah. How? Add yep, add the 2 and subtract from 180. Good. So 117 plus 22. What's 117 plus 22? Yep, 139, then 180 minus 139 is what, how much? 41. 41 degrees, good, 41 degrees. So once you have <clears throat> your second angle found, you can just add and subtract. That's the easiest thing to do. So now we're looking for side C. We'll go back to your original proportion that you used, sine of 117, sine of 117 over 38. And now we're going to use the information from angle C. You guys found out that angle C was 41 degrees, right? So now we can find side C. It's just like a puzzle. So we're going to cross multiply. So C times the sine of 117 equals 38 times the sine of 41. Divide both sides by sine 117. And side C, round it to the nearest whole number. 
So 38 times the sine of 41 divided by sine of 117, 27.97. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to say it's about 28 units. We don't know what it is yet. All right, so we solved this triangle. So some of you are like, how do you know? I don't know if I got it right or not. <clears throat> Think about it. The longest side should be across from what? The biggest angle. So the biggest angle is 117. Is the longest side 38? Yeah. yeah. The smallest side should be across from the smallest angle. Well, what's smaller, 41 or 22? 22. So what's across from 22? 16, which is the smallest side. You see that? All right, let's do the next one. All right, they gave us different letters this time. Same kind of information as C and B, so I'm still going to use A, B, and C. But here they told me that C was 145 degrees. So side C is 33 across from it, and then side B is 7, so across from here. So you are looking for what pieces of information? You need side A, right? You need angle A, and we need angle B. Everybody agree? All right, do I have a side length and its corresponding angle measure? Yes, I do. So go ahead and set that up. You have sine 145 over 33 equals. What angle do we have to find first? Got to find B because we know side B. We don't know anything about A. So I have sine of B over 7. Cross multiply. So 7 times the sine of 145 equals 33 times the sine of B. Divide both sides by 33. So I have the sine of B equals. So 7 times the sine of 145 divided by 33. And I got 0.1216677. You guys got the same? Okay, second side, second answer. And I got angle B is about 6.98. So angle B is about 7 degrees. Is that okay? No. Yeah. I mean, angle C is huge, so that's okay. Well, how could I find angle A? If I know... Two angles, how can I find the third one? Add it up. So 145 plus 7. What's 145 plus 7? 152. So take 180 minus 152. And you get what? 28 degrees. Okay, great. So now we found all the angles in our triangle. I know that this is 28. I know that this is 7. So now I'm going to find little a. Go back to your original <clears throat> law of sines proportion that you used, 145 and 33. We didn't round or anything there, so let's stick with that one. So I have sine of 145 over 33 equals sine 28 over a. And again, you're going to cross multiply. So a times the sine of 145 equals 33 times the sine of 28. Divide by sine 145. And A is about how long? About how much? 27. 27? Okay. You guys agree? Yeah. Okay, so 27 units. Now check. The longest side across the biggest angle? Yes. Smallest side across the smallest angle? Yes. So you guys are good. Move the word problem to the end. You guys absolutely 100% will have word problems on your test. So remember, we're talking about triangles. So if you have a word problem <clears throat> and we're talking about triangles, what should you draw? Draw a triangle, okay? I'm not even going to read the question right now. I'm just going to draw a triangle to kind of get a picture of what I'm looking at, what I'm trying to find, all that good stuff. I don't like the way I'm drawing my triangle. All right, it says a satellite orbiting the Earth passes directly overhead at observation stations in Phoenix and Los Angeles. All right, so where is your satellite? Your satellite's going to be up here. Okay, here's my satellite. Boop, boop, boop. Kind of looks like a UFO. All right, there's my satellite. What are the two stations that they gave us? Phoenix and LA. So here's Phoenix and here's LA. How far are Phoenix and Los Angeles from each other? 
340 miles. Okay, you guys, you okay with that? Now, if we keep reading, it says the angles of elevation simultaneously observed. That means at the exact same time. What's the angle at Phoenix? 60 degrees. Okay. What is the angle at LA? 75 degrees. Okay. How far is the satellite from LA? So this is what I'm looking for. I have to use the law of signs because this is not a right triangle, but I do have angles and side measures. But do I have an angle measure and its corresponding side right now? No. Can I figure out where the angle at the satellite? Yeah. How? Okay, we're going to add 60 and 75. What's 60 and 75? 135, okay. And then what's 180 minus 135? 45 degrees. So here's 45. Now, why did that help us? Can I use the law of sines now? Yeah. Yes, I have this right here. I can say it's sine of 45 over 340 equals what? Sine 60 over X. We're trying to figure out how far Los Angeles is from the satellite. So we're going to cross multiply. You have 340 times the sine of 60 equals X times the sine of 45. And then what's the last thing we need to do? Divide both of these by the sine of 45. Great. So about how many miles? Round it to the nearest whole number. <clears throat> so sine 60 divided by sine of 45. About how much? 416. About 416 miles. All right, 416 miles. Would it make sense that the side length across from 60 should be bigger than the side length across from 45? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that the case? Yes. So tonight on your web assign, you guys can start. Some of the triangles are no triangle. Some of them are two. You guys don't know how to do the two yet, but you will tomorrow. <coughs> but go ahead and get started. Your web assign is not due until Thursday, <clears throat> but you need to get ahead of it. Don't wait until the end. You're not going to have enough time to get it all done.